Wow, here we are again. Brother Peter, with tidbits. Listen, we've been in the Psalms for a bit. And we're in Psalm 48 right now. We're going to start this. The great is the Lord, comma. Wow. Could you start anything any better with any better statement? And, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. We sing this. This is a sign that we sing. In the mountain of his holiness. Wow. He is a holy God. You remember the mountain? You remember when Moses went up? He got as far as the burning bush, which was a little ways. And then when, when God spoke, the mountain trembled and smoked and there was lightning and all kinds of things. Uh, when you hear God speak audibly, you heard the Son of God speak. The audible speaking was the Son of God. When God spoke, everything shook. And uh, uh, the celebration over the Assyrian uh, con countenance uh, continues, as well as the same passage speak in prophetic tones of the coming victory over the Antichrist. This is the explanation of verse 1. And it states as surely as in the previous uh, most definitely will be in the future. Now what 47 said, chapter 47, a sign saying, is what is going to be present from now on throughout here. Beautiful for the situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north in the city of the great king. So let's take a look at how this could be sung, and I, I have no tone in my in my body. I don't have one tone. I couldn't carry a tune if I had to. But this is like David playing on his harp, and he's. I wish I had him just any kind of stringed instrument. He may have had a bowed stick with little thin vines in there, and it made a, a noise. Or he may have had a real harp with some kind of strings on it that he could play, or even with both hands. But he was singing at the same time, and his scribe was writing. And he's singing, Great is our Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Now see, David may have sang like that. He may not have could have carried a tune either. But he's, he's singing the best of his ability. A beautiful situation, the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. And Jerusalem is situated in the exact geographical center of the earth. In the coming kingdom age, Jerusalem will be what God has always intended, the joy of the whole earth. Earth. By the way, the Dead Sea is the lowest spot on the earth. The lowest spot, I understand, on the earth. And where is Zion? Jerusalem is situated exactly geographically in the center of the earth. It's dead center. It's the top of the earth. Or the bottom of the earth. But it's the dead center of the earth. God is known in her places for a refuge in the great cities and the uh, governmental centers of the world. Men are known, but in this great city and uh, places, God will be known. For lo, the king were assembled there and that passed by together. This speaks of the kings of the earth during Hezekiah's day whom assembled to destroy Jerusalem. They felt they could not lose, but lose they did. It will be the same during the Antichrist, days of the Antichrist. Uh, they saw it and saw that they marveled and they were troubled and hastened away. Why did they, did they run? 
They ran because the Lord, with one angel and one night, slew 185,000 Assyrians, completely discriminating their army. And uh, 2 Kings 19.35, Isaiah 37.36. Fear took hold upon them there in the plain of a woman in travail. <laughs> and no wonder, for the first time in the history, they came up against the God of glory. Wow. So you break the ships of Tarshish with an east wind. If Hezekiah wrote this sign, he probably little understood the full meaning of the verse given to him by the Holy Spirit. Its greater fulfillment will be at the battle of Armageddon where the Antichrist, having great worship, encounters the in the Mediterranean, uh, aiding his great sh strike against Israel, the Lord will break those ships and do so with the east wind, which ever uh, that actually means, whatever that actually means. Uh, as we have heard so, we have seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God, God will establish it forever. Selah. That means stop and muse. God took that little city. It seemed very uncomfortable to me. I visited there in 74. Uh, and actually in 74, we were allowed to do much more than you can do now if you go because of the war. But even though the war was there, they allowed buses to go to Petra. I guess the bus people had to pay those guys that were dug in around there in 1974. The mountains were covered with soldiers and you couldn't stop. If you stopped the bus, the ground started moving and they, they started coming out of the ground. Uh, but they allowed you to pass through there. But you can't go there now, I understand. Well, during the time of Hezekiah, Judah saw what the Lord could do at the second coming, which will end the battle of Armageddon. Israel will once again see what the Lord can do, and so will the enemy of the world. Hey, we have uh, thought of your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. The writer is referring here to times of prayer in the temple when the enemy was at the gate. According to your name, O God, so is your praise under the ends of the earth. Your right hand is full of righteousness. Wow. So, God's accusation being ever in harmony with his character. His fame, therefore, extends and will extend to the very ends of the earth. I love the fact that even today, in, in, in 2020, uh, we have a guy on the radio that does the bus. The, every day I hear him, every day. He's been on for uh, 100 years. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he's all over the whole known world. And, and he is a great preacher. And everybody hears him. And he's good. Let Mount Zion rejoice and let the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgment. While Judah rejoices at the great victory over Sennacherib, still this pertains to the even greater victory coming all over the Antichrist, of which the victory over Sennacherib was a symbol. It's amazing how God took his Bible and made symbols of everything that was going to happen, that did happen. If we read the Bible, we could have saw it before it happened, and it happened. So, uh, walk about Zion, and go around about her, 
until the towers there, thereof. The idea is peace now reigns because the Prince of Peace now reigns. Mark ye her bulwark, consider her palaces, that you may tell it to the generations following. What does that mean? That means after Armageddon, there is going to be 1,000 years of generations. And the generation is a very short period of time, if you please. We'll say 100 years. That a generation can fade out. The, the, the generator could fade out in 100 years. Or he could live 700 years. We don't know if people are going to live extended lives in that 1,000 year reign. If they're going to live the 1,000 years. This psalm is sung in the testimony of the great victory won by the Lord in sending his angel to defeat the Assyrians, which should be told forever, and so it has been, and shall be told forever more about that, that one angel killing that 185. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide unto death. This psalm has the limitations when sung by Hezekiah. It will have a limitation when sung by the people of God at the beginning of the great millennium reign, which will be 1,000 years. Jesus Christ will then be our guide. Thank God for that. Ultimately, there will be no more death. Revelations 21 and 4 and God will make the eternal bold of everybody during that time at the end of Revelation God said it is finished and he's going to do whatever he's going to do with us permanently forever I don't know what that's going to be but I know we're going to live forever and we're going to live forever under him being the guide, under God being the king and the master. And I know in heaven there are streets of gold. I know he talks about that 1,500 mile square worship center that he has that we can go into and we can sit on one level of it uh, when we get there and uh, have a table set before us that we can eat anytime we want. Uh, we can go to that river that flows out from the throne and uh, uh, drink that water of life with the trees uh, every month yield their fruit uh, for, of life for the month and uh, for, for whatever and we can eat of that fruit at all times, anytime and it's going to be something that a small finite mind like us human beings have can't comprehend because you can't comprehend God how could you comprehend a being which God is that could speak this world into existence just speak it into existence he took nothing and spoke something into existence and it has so much mystery in it that the smartest minds on it cannot fathom, really fathom it, or really know it. And that that's the, the, the problem of it, that God is God, and there is none other by, other than Him. He is it. He is the top. There's none other. And so that's the end of uh, uh, Psalm 48. And uh, that's 14 minutes. And we will see you in a little while and in Psalm 49.